Yeah. You gotta work. You gotta work. Ride, shine, it's mine. Gotta show everybody it's my time. Get in here, you gotta work. Grind, shine, never mind who talking down, cause they lie. Don't talk, you gotta work. Welcome to Let's Talk with Carl Lee, where sports, culture, and community intersect. Join Carl and frequent co-host Hollis Lewis as they dive into engaging conversations with guests from all walks of life. Let's Talk is proudly presented by attorney Frank Walker. Real talk, real experience, real results. FrankWalkerLaw.com. Let the conversation begin on Let's Talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Talk with Carl Lee. We dive into conversations dealing with sports and a lot of the issues that come with sports. And today we'll we'll touch into one of those. Um, our sponsor of Let's Talk is attorney Frank Walker. Real talk, real experience, real results. Visit frankwalkerlaw.com for more information. You can catch Let's Talk with Carl Lee every Sunday at 1 p.m., Thursdays at 7 p.m. on 580 WCHS. If you miss an episode, you can go to wchsnetwork.com, let's slash, let's talk, and listen to it online. You can follow us on Facebook with Let's Talk with Carl Lee for any updates and more. All right, so Hollis Lewis is my co-host today, and before I introduce our our guest, you and I have we we've kind of I don't know we've kind of beat up the Caitlin Clark yeah. issue. Um, I guess I, I guess you could say that we maybe some overkill, but I think. Me and you, we don't have. We're we're not really the experienced people in the in in the, in the house. I don't think, right? You know, I don't think that I could. I'm giving my personal opinion as a as a professional athlete, as a college athlete, high school athlete, and and all of the experience that I've had in sports. So I'm trying to. So would you agree that this is more of a a a female athletes? Uh, opinions speaks better than than maybe me and you. I, I think they have a firsthand knowledge. I think us being sports fans our whole lives, us being athlete coaches, we definitely have a perspective and opinion. Um, but you know, a female, particularly a basketball player, professional athlete, a coach, they would have a firsthand knowledge about every, the you know the issues that's surrounding Caitlin Clark and women's basketball, women's sports in general. And I, and I don't think we beat it up because I think it's a pertinent issue, right? It, it's something, it's revolutionary. It's ongoing. We're, we're, we're experienced, we're in the middle of experiencing something that we have not previously experienced in women. I'll say in women's sports, not just basketball. And let me, okay, so I agree 100%. We got to introduce our guests. I, well, I, 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 I want to, but, I, <laughs> but here's, just sitting there hanging out. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm holding her because I think she is like really the ideal person okay. to, to to speak to this, and I, and and I, I want us to get all of our uh-huh. our doubts or our our conversation that does have no to me I feel has no value yeah. compared to her. Okay, yeah. so I I think that Caitlin has done something for the league. I think it has. Mm-hmm. I think in 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 the idea of changing. The game, okay, and this is going to be an interesting to, yeah. to the guest. I think it's her shooting and the depth of her threes and that type of thing. I think that changes it, okay. See, I would argue. I would okay. say I well, would argue different than that because I like again, and I've said this multiple times on this show. I don't think it's just her. I think when you have that great rivalry with her and Angel Reese. When they had it in, in college. college, and now it's going straight to there in the same class. They're going straight to the professional ranks with that. Those two, those rivalry really blossom. And even like Kim Mosey, the coaches, and, and Staley, the coaches, just everything surrounding that. And again, it's I'll big. say Kaylin Clark being at the head of that. You, you okay. cannot dis, discount that. But I don't think it's just about her and just about her game. And I would also say that women's, particularly women's basketball, and I was even watching the uh, women's World Series softball, those – it's just better. It's it's a better watch than the men's game right now. It is, and if we and maybe it's been a better. I don't know, but I'm saying right now, what I'm seeing is a way better watch. 
All right, so our professional guest, <laughs> our professional guest is, I, 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 and I have to say this, I've known her mom, I've known her dad for like <laughs> ever, all right? She is a graduate from South Charleston High School. She played basketball and soccer at South Charleston. She was a member of the South Charleston 2010 State Runner-Up Girls Basketball Team. She's a graduate from Wooster College with a BS in Computer Science, she was a four-year starter in, uh, for the women's basketball team. She also played golf, which I need some golf wow. lessons. So <laughs> she might be, she might be, yeah. she might be the person I'm going to be looking up. Carly Walker Reed. She and she's coached AAU level. Mm -hmm. That's where you. That's basically where that's you where got, got started. Start, yeah. Okay, and that was with the Raising Stars. She has been. Uh, Head coach for the South Charleston Middle School for four years, mm -hmm. South Charleston High School for two years, and she was assistant coach at West Virginia State University, where she continues to volunteer there now and waiting on her journey to see where that see journey where takes her, next. where it goes. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so, and, and she works at CAMC mm -hmm. currently right now. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for being our guest. Thank you for waiting, but I needed. I wanted to set this up because again, I I, I kind of respect the whole the whole era around you, right? And <laughs> Thank you. again, I because it. I know your dad, I know your mom, and then got a chance to see bits and pieces of your career, mm -hmm. and so that's why I wanted to reach out and get you on the show. So I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, we're glad to have you. I'm glad to have you because I don't I don't have to just sit here and try to deal with Hollis the whole time. I got actually somebody who has the professional opinion. So when you have the conversation about Caitlin Clark, mm -hmm. like just in your own space and around other women's women basketball players, female basketball players at any level, what what is that talk like? Well, you got to respect her, right? I mean, she's a baller. She can play. And she can do more than just shoot. Right. That's what people don't really talk about. Like, she has phenomenal basketball IQ. She can see the floor. She passes well. And, yes, her shooting is amazing. I mean, she can hit him from deep. Um, I actually remember the first time I saw her on ESPN, she hit, like, three logo threes against Michigan to bring him back in the fourth quarter. And that's kind of when she really took off mm -hmm. from that moment. Um, I think she's phenomenal. Do I think she's the best player out there right now? No, I do not. I do not think she's the best player in women's basketball. Okay, elaborate a little bit on that. Just for somebody like me, okay? Yeah. Help me with that when you say it. Because when I look at her, I'm like thinking, man. And again, she gets the most attention. I see her more than anybody else. Yeah, and she does get probably the most attention, which, I mean, it is deserved. But there, there's other great women's players out there, and I think it's great that she's getting that attention because it's starting to showcase all the women's talent that's actually out there that people haven't been paying attention to. Somebody like me, I've been paying attention to it for a long time, but some people are new to this. <laughs> They're right, just now right, realizing right. that women's basketball is the real deal. So I think right now the best player in women's basketball is Asia Wilson. Yes. She's a baller. She yes. dominates. Yes. She's leading in scoring. She's leading in rebounding. I think she's second in, uh, what was it, blocks. Mm -hmm. And then she's first in efficiency. <laughs> yeah. And she never gets the praise she deserves. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, to me right now, Asia Wilson is the best player in women's basketball. She's absolutely dominating. Yeah, and she's see, dominating would, every game. I've heard her name, yeah. but, like, I, I would say I don't know her yeah. name, right? Right, like, yeah. right. Like, I wouldn't, like— And you should. Oh, she's, yeah, and I, I, I'm not, I'm in a place where, like, I'm not thinking, like, oh, I'm going to turn the television on. I, if you ask me what team she played on, I'd say, mm, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Las Vegas Aces, yeah. man. See what, Come on. see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I really wouldn't know, so I'd have She's to, got a statue at South Carolina right now. Yeah. She's she a real and, deal. Look and, her and, up. And, again, that's why I say, like, I think the WNBA, one of the, the knocks on they do a poor job of marketing. Marketing in the players, yeah. marketing in general. Yeah, you know? and they're rebranding right now. Yeah. Like now they're referring to it as the W. The W. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's helping. Um, and I think where there was all this hype around March Madness for yeah. women, um, it's it's finally getting the credit that it deserves. Like we finally get to fill out a bracket for the women's game. That used to not be a thing. They wow. used to only be focused on the men. There wasn't even an option to go on any type of app, anything to fill out a bracket. If you wanted to do it, you had to print it out and do it on paper. 
Mm-hmm. People don't even realize that. Like, it, it's growing. Like, it's finally getting the recognition it deserves. There were more viewers watching the women's game this year. Nobody, I don't even think anybody watched the men's championship game. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I, I watched I, the yeah, women's. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, I, I mean, and I'll say this, and, I, and we, you can, you know, give your comments on this. And I would say right now, Although we have the hype around certain players and everything like that, mm-hmm. the women's game is – the game itself is better at I'm, all levels. I'm glad me. you finally got okay. there, Hollis. Yeah. It's been better. You said, it's been better. You said it's been better. It, yeah, if, if you're a true, like, basketball fan – like, I love the game. I, I, if I could watch it all day, every day, I would do it. I could talk about it all day, every day. Mm-hmm. But the women's game has, has been a better watch. They actually have to play. It's not just athleticism and above the rim and shooting threes. You watch the NBA right now, all they're doing is five out. Everybody's standing around and watch the two best players on the team try to go to the basket yeah, and score, and awful. then that's it. <laughs> there's no more triangle offense. There's, there's, there's no more, like, true basketball out there. Um, is, is that even <laughs> – and, and I don't know how, how big of a sport fan you are as far as football or anything. Oh, I, I don't know. even think – I don't even think – Football is the same. Yeah. Well, well I, you know, I would I say. Think, I think I don't, I, and I don't know. Do we have any idea of like why? Is it's, it because we're getting older? No, it's, it's the rules. It's it's the rules. When you look at specifically the W, excuse me, the NBA, because they try to acquiesce to the European style of play. And when you look at the European style of play, it's offense centric. Mm-hmm. They don't have defensive. It's not defensive because they don't have as good as athletes as we have over here. So the NBA has adopted a lot of those rules and standards. So when you see a Luca and a Joker, that's why they're prospering because number one, they're offense centric players. They play no defense at all, and it, it is, it is not as rough as game as it used to be. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely soft now. But yeah. two, it's those players are dominating because they they learn the fundamentals like they were supposed to, right? Yeah. Like here, it's like yeah, here it's like well, the, when you score that much, if you're yeah. outscoring your the person you're guarding, I think that yeah, evens it yeah. out, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't worry yeah, about the defense too that. much. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Let me ask you this because because I see this a lot. I see. Dads, moms, mm-hmm. coaching, or bringing their their kids to the gym, yeah. and the shooting, dribbling. Mm-hmm. There is no focus on defense. It's no. almost as if you don't have to like like you can be a star now simply by shooting. Oh yeah, I and, mean, look and, at Kaylin Clark. Do you see I'm her playing defense? No, <laughs> she she is smart in her defense. She's never guarding the best player though on the other team. She's always guarding somebody who's standing off in the corner. You know what I mean? She's yeah. always the help defender. But, no, she's not known for her defense because, I mean, she really don't have to play defense. But, but, she's not getting the assignment of stopping the best player on the other but team. But if you look at, like, Angel Reese or Brinkley at yeah, in L.A. they play D. They play D. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So the and stars Asia, Asia w- Wilson, and, and, okay. she Wilson, plays D. So the stars of the WNBA, they're playing D. Yeah. And, and, D is okay, still alive. And, and, NBA, who? I, okay, I'm, I'm yeah. sold on that because I do yeah. buy into the idea that you – that that because I'm a – I couldn't shoot. So, <laughs> so Coach Walt had me as the guy covering somebody else, right? Right. Like, and told me basically never to shoot, mm-hmm. you know, unless I absolutely had to. Yeah. So I understand the relevance of defense, mm-hmm. but I don't see anybody specifically going to the gym, telling the kid to get down low, shuffle your feet, that kind of yeah. stuff. You, you don't see it. Everything is offense driven. Offense is driven. Mm-hmm. And, I, think, I think for defense – Defense, I mean, every coach probably has their certain philosophy that they teach within their man-to-man or whatever zone principles they want to teach. And, every, you know, you could talk to 10 different basketball experts and they teach their teams how to play defense probably 10 different ways. To me, defense is heart and hustle. Yes. Yes. If you want to stop somebody, if you have that mindset, like you are not scoring on me today, that's defense. And the drill, the best drills for that is really just like agility drills, right? That side to side movement. So if you can incorporate that in your practices, like that's really what helps on defense. You can do defensive slides and you can do all that. um, But it's really just heart and hustle. And if you watch Western U State, that's what we're about. Heart and hustle. We get after it. So it, if you can teach your kids that and that type of mindset, the defense will almost take care of itself. There's definitely things you have to coach around defense, but it's really just I don't see enough players out there now that have that dog in them. Yeah. And that's when you get great defensive players. 
And, and, if you look at, and if you look at dynasties, particularly in the NBA, they always had that one great defensive player. Mm-hmm. Yes. You look at the Draymond Greens, the Ben yeah. Wallaces, the Dennis Rodmans. They always had that one, the, mm-hmm. the Bruce Bowens. Yep, they always Bowen, had yep. that one just dog defensively. And I'm, and I'm thinking, like, if we want to actually get back to those dynasties, you still got to, I think, have that. Because even uh, my guy Brown from Celtics, mm-hmm. you still got to have a good defensive player. Yeah. It's just the emphasis is not on that. As much yeah, but you and going back to the women's game, you look at March Madness this year. WVU gave Iowa a run for yes, their money. Did. Yes, yeah. they did. Because they, they play too. great defense. They get yeah. after it. And they had Caitlin Clark's number. She was frustrated that yeah. entire game. Then you go to the national championship game. I think she had 20 points in the first quarter. And then they put Raven Johnson on her, and she shut her down. Locked her. She only scored, yeah. like, eight or ten points after that yeah. for three more quarters. So, but, like, defense wins games. But why – okay, and, and that's that, that slogan's been – Yeah. Forever. Mm-hmm. But why are we not – why, why, why in, in, let's say, high school, mm-hmm. why are we not focused on that and, and, and teaching those things? I can remember. But I still, I, sh- I, the coaches still teach it. Yeah, coaches I, I still teach think, it. Coaches I, see, still I think it. I think it's just not highlighted. It's just mm-hmm. not, it, it, and I think you still got kids probably grabbing, picking up scholarships. Well, if you, if you okay, mm-hmm. so if you casually yeah. teach me, and, and that might be the, a bad word, but yeah. if you casually teach me something, mm-hmm. and I spend 90% of my time on the offensive side, mm-hmm. whether it's shooting a layup, shooting a three, shooting a foul shot, and I don't spend time because I can remember having a guy dri- dribble the ball back and forth, you know, left to right, left to right, and shuffling to to stay in front of him mm-hmm. to a point that where you'd almost <laughs> like your back's hurt and your legs are killing you. You're mm-hmm. ready to but, die. But I think yeah. I, we but don't I think, do those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, we do. Coaches do. Coaches yeah. do. Yeah. And, and, coaches, I, and I did that at the high school level. Yeah. I did that at the middle school yeah. level. Like coaches still work on yeah. defense. I think when you're like when you're talking about going and working out and like paying for lessons and things of that nature, yeah, they're going to focus more on the offensive skills because that's what I have not seen one kid go over to Joplin and do defensive slots. <laughs> that's just not what they're going to want to do when they're working on their individual game. Plus, if you want to make yourself a better individual defender, there are things you can do, but defense is also teamwork, right? So, like, doing those in individual sessions, there's some benefit, but doing that when you're with your team, there's more benefit, yeah, in and, my opinion. That's and they, and they, when they do, like, the ladder drills and those sort yeah. of agility drills, that works right. athletic drills, that's defense. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily, like, a one-to-one comparison, mm-hmm. but when they're doing those athletic drills, that is yeah. defense. And a lot of coaches, they're, they're – Defensive driven. If you look at South Charleston High School this year, you had Big Rome in the middle, and he was changing mm-hmm. shots. So people going to the lane, they couldn't get to the lane because he was there. Yeah. And you can see the difference when he was on the court. You can see the difference when he's off the court. Oh, for sure. So defense is still relevant. Yeah. It's just that one on one. If you're like I said, if you're working out, that's not probably yeah. what you're gonna be working out with specifically. And and you talk about the slogan "Defense wins games," but offense sells tickets, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. so yeah. that's Absolutely. why people focus on that a lot more, um, and they look at the offensive end more, like. The, I don't know of one great defensive player that got the praise that they necessarily deserve um, within teams like Raven Johnson. Like she got a lot of praise simply because she shut Caitlin Clark down. If that would have been somebody else, else. I don't know she would have gotten the praise and that she deserved. Done, and she's probably done that the game year. after game after game. Yeah, but she until has. It was Caitlin, mm-hmm. yeah. All of a sudden now it's, yeah. it's a big deal. And and that's a lot of the reason why South Carolina is doing so well. They are a great defensive team. And granted, they're also very tall. I don't yeah. know where Don Saley's finding yeah. all these tall girls, but yeah, like What's they're the one girl to uh, the center, Car- Cordoza. She's yeah, like six seen, eight. Yeah, you seen the difference when she was on the court? When yeah, she was off the court for South Carolina. Yeah. and you seen the difference now with the sky. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah, the other interesting thing, kind of a little bit off subject, but these ladies are dunking the basketball now. Mm-hmm. And and I think, I think Alexis Hornbuckle was dunking the basketball. Yeah. Back in the early 2000s. The greatest high school basketball player of all time in West Virginia, in my opinion. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, I, I grew and, up and, and loving. To, and we're hoping to get her, too. So. Yeah, I grew up loving women's basketball. I grew up watching Lex, Renee, Meg Withrow, Keisha Tyler. Like, the Nitro-South Charleston mm-hmm. rivalry then was the most fun games to watch. I, I honestly didn't care to go to a high school <laughs> men's game, to be perfectly right. honest, back then. Because the women's games were way more fun. 
I mean, I I have never seen a men's high school game where I look over in the corner of the rec center in South Charleston and see Pat Summit, Muffet McGraw, uh, Gino Ariema, Brenda Freeze. Like, these are all major D1 coaches right. there to watch Lex and Renee. Wow. Right. Yeah, like, so I, have, I haven't seen that locally for the men's game, and it could have happened. I just didn't see it. Like, OJ was huge. He was a sensation yeah. when him and Patrick Patterson were at Huntington. Yeah. But it was nothing like the Lex and Renee era. What do you think was the – Do you, is there a reason why women's sports ha, has been on a delay for the media? Is there is there a justifiable reason or is it just the media just assumed that it wasn't well, worth covering or, or putting out like, quote, the men's games? Well, a lot of the problem was there wasn't a whole lot of women in the media. So now you're seeing a true. lot more That's female yeah, sportscasters. Yeah. I, didn't I mean, that. Doris yeah. Burke was is the first woman ever to commentate an NBA Finals game, and that happened this year <laughs> in 2024. Like, yeah. think about how crazy that is. So no woman has ever commentated an NBA Finals game until this year. She's the first ever, and very well deserved. She's one of the best commentators there is out there, and she was one of the best players there is, like, in women's basketball, but not many people know that. Like, so I think really it's just the exposure and the representation, like representation matters. So when you don't have women advocating in the media to show and do women's games, it's not going to be shown. And I'll say just to add to that point, and and I've said this previously, it's just I'm telling you, the men's sports are just almost unwatchable (laughs) on TV now. They're they're just kind of stale right now. it, It is. It is. This is the worst that I've ever seen. Like I said, even watching, comparing, like I'm watching the College World Series compared to the Softball World Series. The soft, Again, and, and I, actually the College World Series is actually pretty mm-hmm. good to watch. But the Softball World Series is far Way superior. better. Way better. Far superior. Yeah. If you watch basketball, NCAA, men's, women, the women's game is far superior. It's just yeah. better. You know, even watch, we're football guys, right? Watching football now, because of all the rules change, it's a little bit difficult to watch. Mm-hmm. Track and field, I was watching that yesterday. I mean, that's kind of equal. I mean, those phenomenal athletes. But I just say pound for pound right now, as far as a televu- television viewing audience with mm-hmm. so many other options, the women's game is better to watch. Yeah, and I, I think for women, like, all we've ever asked for is a seat at the table, right? So think about it. Like, there's not even that many all-girls basketball leagues, period, around here. And there that is growing. Like, we just got an all-girls summer league that's happening in South Charleston, which I'm so excited about. What there's, is that for? I Plug think it's that. for grade school. I think it's grade school age um, girls, first through fifth grade, I believe. When does um, that start? That starts, I have to ask Kayvon, I'll, I'll know, but it's this summer. I want to say it starts, like, within the next couple weeks. Yeah, he created, he, yeah, he Kayvon all, created all, that. All so, girls? Yeah, yeah okay, all girls. girls yeah, yeah, yeah girls. Take, but, take your girls to South Charleston but summer have, league. They have, yeah. they, have, they have guys. Yeah. They have the guys, I but I know, yeah. but they do, the but they so create, I think, like, just women. having those avenues for girls to feel more comfortable and come out and play. Like, obviously, like, when I was growing up, I was probably one of maybe five girls in the youth league at South Charleston. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Sissy Wilson were, and we made all-stars every year. We were better than a lot of the boys <laughs> that we played with, but that's not always the case, right? So not everybody's confident enough to go in and do that. So I think the exposure, like AAU even now, the women's teams are finally getting exposure, and they're getting sponsorships from Nike and Under Armour and things of that nature, and that didn't used to happen, like except for like the top 10 teams in the country. Now there's all all kinds of amazing athletes out there in the women's game. So I think because the game is growing and we're getting more people interested and more girls are starting to play at a younger age, there's way more talent out there now than there ever has been. Is it to, to Hollis's point, when you watch when you watch a woman's sport, mm-hmm. and maybe with the exclusion of, of track. Yeah, those are equal. Yeah, those yeah. are pretty much yeah. equal. Yeah. The women's sport looks different. Like, the effort looks different. Yeah. The hustle. Yeah, we play hard. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I think the guys have kind of gotten to a space where, you know, hey, I'm making all this money. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not diving for a ball. You're, like, you're not going to get a Dennis Rodman 
type of player. Yeah. Well, to I mean, show then they get then they get criticized. Yeah. yeah, they get criticized. They're too aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, look at Draymond. He also says some crazy stuff. So yeah. he, he does that. Out there. Yeah, he, <laughs> but like that's not acceptable anymore. Like Dennis Rodman was kind of praised for that in the '90s and early 2000s. You know what I mean? And like that's when the NBA was fun to watch. Was yes. the '90s and early 100%. 2000s? Like, but, but but people did like not like him, and, and oh, he was yeah. the dirty guy. I mean, think about you know? it. You're you're getting guarded and you're getting a little elbow all the time. Yeah, yeah nobody's gonna like that. Nobody likes it when somebody's up in your face playing defense like that or getting every rebound. Like yes. that's what yeah. I love about Angel Reese, man. She can rebound. Yes. I mean, and yes. she's she's getting like ten boards a game right now as a rookie mm-hmm. in the WNBA. But I think I think just like. The men's game has been around for so long, and it's evolved in a way of a lot of just kind of like, to me, it's just professionally selfish play. Like, I think UConn men's team was a great example this year that if you go out and just play the game how it should be played, you'll dominate. Nobody was even close to UConn men in the March Madness games. They won all their games by double digits most of the time, 20 point leads, including the championship game. Yeah. And that's because Coach Hurley's a fantastic coach. That's why the Lakers are trying yes, to get him sir. right now. Yes, man, we got him. But, but to me, the women's game has always been fundamental and it's always been tough and it's always been competitive because we don't have necessarily the above the rim play at every player, like almost every player in the NBA can dunk. Right. That's not the case in the WNBA. Um, so I think like it's just more fundamental and it's just great basketball. It's, it's great basketball and it's the way the game should be played. And it's funny you said that because I was listening to Carmelo Anthony today. He was doing a podcast and basically what he said is if you want to learn to play basketball, watch the women's game. Mm-hmm. And he made the, the exactly what you just said mm-hmm. is the point that he made yeah. because, because you don't have the athleticism and above the rim play that you have to be gritty. You have to, you know, set that screen and do that curl and, mm-hmm. and do the fundamentals that are going to make this thing work. And I think that because in because we have so much flash and mm-hmm. uh, individualism in sports mm-hmm. that the player who does the fundamental things, the players who just does the may not be like the flashy thing, but just the, he set that screen perfectly and made that block perfectly mm-hmm. that we're noticing that person now as opposed to the to the guy or girl who's yeah. doing all the flashy stuff. Yeah. So, and I think and, and, you have a league of players who are her doing built that. like that, mm-hmm. it just makes it like, wow, this is refreshing Yeah, to watch. And, and the women's game is just getting more competitive too, right? Like in the college area specifically, like it was UConn and Tennessee. And those, those were the teams winning almost every single year was UConn and Tennessee. And now – now we've got the South Carolinas, we've got LSU, um, Baylor's been good. We, I mean, West Virginia women's basketball is doing great. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, Marshall women's basketball won the conference. Shout out to Coach Kim, who's now the head coach at the University of Tennessee. Local mm-hmm. girl played basketball with her. And how about West Virginia women's basketball? Yeah. Speaking of that, we had what, what in the conference we had three. Three, uh, we had Fairmont State, UC make the national, mm-hmm. Marshall WVU made the national made the tournament. national tournament, and I, I don't That's understand crazy. how that wasn't talked about more. I, I, we had, I, I was, yeah, was going to be that yeah. was gonna make my it was tournament. it was West Virginia State Fairmont in the NCAA Division two tournament, and it was it? I don't think UC made okay, it this year yet. Two. Now it um, one year it was State Glenville and UC okay, though they the did way. make it yeah. one year all three of them together, but then it was also W and Marshall made the NCAA tournament, and Marshall was a third. 13 seed. Yes. Like, that's how good Marshall did this year. They yes. were a 13 seed. That's unheard of. And won their conference. Yeah, one won year. their conference, won the regular season, and won the tournament and for then, their conference. And then had a yeah. coach go to Tennessee, which is a premier. That's like that's a, a coach per- going yeah. from state yeah. to Marshall to like Notre Dame and, or and, USC. Yeah. And she did that. She was at Glenville, wow. then she went to Marshall, yeah. and then now at uh, University of Tennessee. Those, was, those like, are huge jumps. Yeah. Those are huge jumps. Yeah, I can't let's, wait let's, to let's go take watch. A pause so we can get a, uh, a commercial in here and we'll be right back. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's Talk with Carl Lee is presented by attorney Frank Walker. Real talk, real experience, real results. FrankWalkerLaw.com Comment on episodes, ask Carl and Hollis questions, or suggest topics at our Facebook page. Search for Let's Talk with Carl Lee, and remember to like the page to become part of the conversation. 
Let's face it, bad things happen to good people. Seriously injured in a car accident, trucking accident, or even wrongfully arrested. Life happens, and when it happens to you, you will need sound legal advice and aggressive representation. That's when you call attorney Frank Walker at 304-413-0179. That's 304-413-0179. Lock it in your phone, text it to a friend. 304-413-0179. Or visit online at attorneyfrankwalker.com. Find previous episodes of Let's Talk at WCHSnetwork.com slash Let's Talk. This is Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Now, back to the conversation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back from a break. I just want to give another little shout out for my sponsor, Frankie Walker. Let's Talk is proudly presented by attorney Frank Walker. Real talk, real experience, real results. You can visit Frankie Walker online at frankwalkerlaw.com. For more information, Hollis. Yes, sir. I, um, in in the break, I was like, you know, I was I was mentioning the possibility of kind of like easing through something else, mm-hmm. but I think we want to. I think the the consensus is we yeah. want to kind of stay in this in this vein. So, lead us back out to to an to an angle that I think. Uh, you you want to you want to take it because I'm I'm curious to see I'm learning here yeah <laughs> all right so I'm I'm I'm, I'm grabbing from you two so well, talk well, to me I, a little well, bit I guess I would you know start with a question I I think now now that you know I would say that women's basketball specifically women's sports in general has this level of attention where do you see kind of the next steps happening to actually propel it where it's, you know, where you have, uh, you know, where they're they getting paid, how they're supposed to get paid? Yeah, I was going to say the pay. Day. I mean, think about it in the WNBA right now, of all the girls that were drafted, 13 are only still in the WNBA. 13. I think yeah. there was maybe 35 mm-hmm. players drafted in the WNBA and only 13 are still on current how rosters. Many teams? There are, I think, 12 current 12 teams. teams. And why, why do you think that is? It's not enough teams. There's not enough teams. There's there's so much great talent out there and each team only has twelve roster spots. So you so so would you say kind of the next step is the expansion teams? Yes, I think that's huge. Like the Valkyries that we just got, that's gonna be fantastic. There's another team that I think is gonna be in Toronto. Um, I mean, we used to have the Charlotte Sting. I mean, think about it. The closest yeah, the closest WNBA team to us right now is probably the Washington Mystics in DC or the Indiana Fever in Indianapolis and those are like five six hour drops how, so how big of a like how big of an impact have you seen or seen as a change with the growth of the WNBA mm-hmm. and, and 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 women's sports as a whole mm-hmm. young girls their gravitation to Women's sports. Women's yep. sports. I love it. I mean, I, I honestly am starting to hear people yelling Kaylin Clark instead of Kobe when they're leaning back to hit a shot. You know what I mean? Oh, so wow. it's okay. it's it's cool, and it's cool to see young men as well are also paying attention to the women's game because um, we want everybody to watch, not just right. women. We want everybody involved. We want everybody to watch. But it's really cool seeing young girls have women to look up to to play. Like my favorite player growing up was Diana Taurasi, and I think she's the GOAT. Like, she will always be the greatest of all time for me. Um, but she, I don't think she got the praise she deserved because talk about shooting, she can hit deep threes. Yeah. G- Gino just didn't allow that. <laughs> well, okay, well, and, and, so. and speaking of that, we got to talk about this, uh, the Olympic team. Yeah. Where um, we look at the roster and we don't see Angel Reese, we don't see Cleveland Clark, we don't see Brinkley, we don't see mm-hmm. any of this class on that team. Yeah. Just in your view again, and I'm and I'm sure all the ladies, all the women on that team are well deserving. Mm-hmm. But just from a marketing standpoint, do you think that was a strategic mistake not to have some of those players on that team? No, I don't think they're good enough right now to play at the Olympic level. Okay, I think wow. the players that are currently on the roster deserve to be on the roster, and I think again it showcases there is a lot of talent out there. There is a lot of women's talent out there, and we're just now getting to see it on display. Like, a lot of the rookies, they've struggled their first couple games yeah, in the WNBA. Facts. Yeah, the game is more physical. You're playing against grown women. You're not playing against 18- to 22-year-old kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you're playing against grown women who have been doing this for a long time. 
um, and they were dominant in college as well. Yeah. And, you know, now they're dominating at the professional level. So, I mean, Asia Wilson, really, she's taken off within the last two years. You yeah. know what I mean? And she she struggled, too. Like, very rarely do you see a rookie really come in and dominate. To me, I think a rookie that did that was Candace Parker. Yeah. And she's yeah. one of the greatest of all times, too. So, you don't really see that. I mean, Stewie won – Four championships in four years was the MVP almost every single year, and she came in the league and still had an adjustment period. You know what I mean? So I think it's really showing that, like, no, there's a lot of talent out there. And as good as Caitlin Clark is, as good as Angel Reese is, as good as Cameron Brink is, and I don't think she gets enough credit because yeah, she's, she's been balling she's right now. Balling. Yeah, but I, I think the roster as is, there's – I would have loved to have added more people, but yeah. who they have, I think, is great. That's what I think. I think they could have added three more spots. I yeah. think they got 12 on the roster now. Yeah. 10 or 12? Uh, probably 12. 12. That's usually I the average they could number. Add more, like, yeah, but again, two, that, that comes spots. down to the money, too. Like, probably yeah. can't afford to add those spots because then, you know, it's the WNBA still not making the money that it should. But it's USA Basketball, so yeah. they get paid through a different entity. It's yeah. not WNBA. It's pay. probably, but I bet you if I we would investigate, it's probably still not equal to but what yeah, the USA men's team has. Yep. Let me ask you just one more question when we're talking about professional and we talk about expansion mm-hmm. is there ever could there ever 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 for like a WNBA could we could West Virginia maybe not West Virginia alone maybe we could put them in like a tri-state like in Huntington where you have could, Ohio Kentucky West Virginia like a could, could we ever host could we ever be a home of a like a WNBA team? I would love to be. <laughs> it would be awesome. <laughs> I don't know though. Um, shoot, I'll take Columbus. Like Columbus, get get us okay. a team in Columbus. Like that's only two and a half hour drive. I'll be there every game Pittsburgh, if I can. Columbus. Yeah, yeah I got Pittsburgh, Columbus area. That's probably more realistic right yeah. now. Um, but I think you know, as as long as the cap, pretty much like the capital cities in those smaller, like what you said, the tri-state area. Yeah, yeah. If they keep growing, if we keep you know getting more people to move in, <laughs> like yeah. the whole economic impact. Yeah, I think we could. But right now, unfortunately, I don't yeah, think it's probably possible. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I think just dreaming. Yeah, yeah well, right. I, I know. Me too. I think. I think. Really, I think a whole host of West Virginians would love to have some form of a professional team here. Oh, yeah. So something. something. Yeah. You know, West Virginia is a sports state, I feel like. It, it you really know? is. And yeah. unfortunately, yeah. you're stuck, you know, mm-hmm. with West Virginia and Marshall. <laughs> that's like, that's our pro team right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's really WVG, to be honest. You know, yeah. and, and well, I, you know, I got at least. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm right. I got to shout out I got to shout out Marshall out. Yeah. But at least, you, you know, whether it's one, two, mm-hmm. it, it's still, I think we're, I think we're missing out. Yeah, I think having the TBT here the last couple years was huge. Um, You know, that's probably the closest to a professional (laughs) type of game we've been able to get because a lot of the people who play in the TBT were former NBA players. Um, So I think it was cool to have that here. I think from a women's standpoint, if we could get an exhibition WNBA game here, that would be that's wild. Are we like? Are we? Is it because of facilities that uh, we can't? The, the, the Civic Center I don't can so. host it. The Civic Center the could Coliseum. definitely host it. I mean, yeah. the Coliseum in Morgantown could host it. They had an exhibition game at South Carolina yeah. um, with the Las Vegas Aces. Yeah. Yeah, so we could definitely. I think do that. we could definitely host it. And do I we think have a reason? Awesome. Does the, is there, okay, so if we have something that See, can host it. Now you're going to have me fi- researching this it, later. Well, uh, is, is it financial? Or it, or, or it's just because it's oh, it's West Virginia. No, I think no, we, we yeah. had like the cycling. Uh, I saw, yeah, the cycling yeah. was a crowd right. here. Yeah. We had the Junior Olympics as far as boxing here. We had yeah. the old man. You mentioned the team. I, I hear all So that. I think if we can get with our 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 leadership, shout mm-hmm. out to Mayor Goodwin. Yeah, Mr. she's Lango, doing fantastic. I think something like that could happen. Mm-hmm. To, and okay, so let's let me change let me change the way that I say it. Mm-hmm. Have we just not thought about it? And, and now the sport, like, we haven't thought about hosting something like that. So yeah. we've never had. I, I, think, I, I think, I'm sorry, I'll mm-hmm. let you go. But you're good. I, sports tourism is a new industry. Mm-hmm. Yes. So sports tourism is really kind of a new concept to West Virginia. I'm not mm-hmm. saying national. Right. To West Virginia. So I think we're looking at it. And I, and I truly believe with, uh, you know, our current leadership, I think in the next four to five years. Because, again, we've had what, uh, we had 49ers here. We've had the Saints here mm-hmm. as far as doing their training, training camps camp. in, mm-hmm. in Greenbrier. So I think we're close, and it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, and then the PGA golf tournament was at the PGA, Greenbrier, too. Yep. Yeah, so I think it's going to start happening. Tennis. I think you got leadership and Amy Goodwin, you shout out to Ben Salingo as well, that are thinking outside the box. And they're like, yeah, why, why, can't, why can't we host these events here? 
let, let's make it happen. So I think if you can, you know, do it from a financial standpoint and you can get enough people who want to come to those events and they show up and actually come, then, yeah, I don't see why we couldn't do something yeah. like that. I, I just don't know how anybody wouldn't come because I, the one thing that I would say in West Virginia, if anything— we're sports fans. Yes, I agree. You know, we 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 are locked into, mm-hmm. and I mean, you can take that all the way down to youth sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got grown men fighting over. You know, <laughs> that's a whole sports. other issue. Yeah, that's, that's a whole, whole other issue. issue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I mean, just the reality of what the sport is, mm-hmm. we're all over it. You yeah. know, we, we we dive into it with yeah. claws. Yeah, and, and women's basketball is growing here as well. Like, shout out to Lex and Renee. They were kind of like the catalyst for that yeah. in West Virginia. Um, seeing that type of talent here was crazy, and like, they got a lot of coaches' attention at the national level. And then they finally started coming here and recruiting a little bit more. And, like, the Aaliyah Dunhams. Yeah. Like, Aaliyah was fantastic. Um you know, and we just need to keep keep building on that. Keep you know supporting the women athletes here. Keep you know giving them the skills, coaching them up, that kind of thing. I mean, I think it's just going to keep getting better. And, and to that point, and I think you kind of mentioned some things earlier. But what do we need to do here, like within the state, locally, to make sure that we're continuing to support? What what do women's sports here need? Women's sports here, um, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same. Like, you know, I was one of the only female coaches in the high school level, and now we've got Olivia Woody at Capitol. Um, and honestly, there's a couple others in some more rural counties. There's a coach at Chapmanville, female coach at Chapmanville, Coach Gore. She's doing a great job. That We need to be, be represented. We need more women getting involved and in giving back to the sport that they once loved. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's huge. Um, Because I, you know, I wear my, the girls used to make fun of me all the time because I wear my WNBA gear to practices and stuff all the time. I'm always representing it some way, shape or form. Um, So I think we need more women coming to the table and being involved in sports, youth, middle school, high school, college, and being ready to give back. I think especially here, we need more of that. Um, Are we, are we giving those women when, when it's their time, did we give them enough for them to feel like it's worth giving back, because some people can just give back just because of the that's just naturally, they're they're naturally who they are. Yeah, I, but because sometimes I think you have to give me something to make me say, "Well, okay, well, I'm, well, gonna, I'm gonna do this for you." Yeah, if, if you're getting into coaching because you you want money or anything like that, you're getting in no, it for the wrong reasons. Wrong reasons. Yeah, you're getting in it for the wrong reasons. I think it's just you know encouraging women to get out there and do it. I think too, it's different dynamic, right? Like. Women are usually the people, the ones that are raising the kids. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are, you know, running the households, things of that nature. Um, And I think and it's been frowned upon for women to do both. Um, And I think we are seeing more and more now that it's being more encouraged. And so it's okay for a woman to run a business, run a family and, you know, have extracurriculars that they're into as well. I think before that was really discouraged. It was stay in your place. Um, so I think now that women are being encouraged to like do things like that, I think that's going to get better too. And again, coaching coaching doesn't pay a lot anyway. <laughs> no, it you does know? not. But I can't. I, I you know I can't imagine, I, and I don't know this as a fact, but I can't imagine that a a female coach, a women's coach, say if if I coach football. Mm-hmm. And you coach basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm going to assume that I'm going to make more. Oh, for sure. Than, than you're going to make. Yeah. Which to me makes no sense. Head coach, head coach, head coach. Don't nah, matter what it, it is. It, 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 come on, coach. It, what? Nah. I'm, no, I'm just. I'm just saying. Yeah, I but it, think it, that it yeah, should be. Nah. If yeah. you're the head, mm-hmm. then it should be equal. I mean, it's, it's no, equal pay. No, I know that it's no. not. Yeah, and it's not going to be because yeah. I mean, think about it. Like football stadiums are huge compared yeah. to basketball arenas. So they're always going to get sell more tickets. Yeah. They're going to have. I understand you know, that, more but let's fans. just let's take let's so take basketball. The, yeah. I, but I don't. I don't think like far as. You know, to me, this isn't a male or female thing. It's just sport. Like, for example, if if we have a sport, if we have somebody who coaches an Olympic sport, 
they're not going to get paid. They they should not get paid the same as somebody who coaching like a women's basketball team who, like you said, going to fill up a stadium versus yeah. a head coach of a football that, who going to fill up an arena. Yeah, that, and that's arena. sport by sport. That but if we focus just on basketball, there definitely is disparity between coaches' pay for men and women. Okay, can, there's definitely disparity. Yeah, like the the even looking at the, the major D one schools, like some of the D one men's coaches are getting paid outrageous amounts of money, yeah. um, and they're they're not even as successful as some of the women's programs that are also at the Division One level. Yeah. Um, so I think there's definitely disparity there. I think it's starting to get better. Yeah. Um, I think like the Dawn Staley's, who's a trailblazer right. for women's sports, yeah, she's right. <laughs> um, she she's she getting big bag. contracts now, which is fantastic because we weren't seeing that before, and it's well deserved, right? Like Absolutely. I mean, she put her time in. Like everybody thinks, like she's just been successful this whole time. No, she was at Temple before and was like struggling and building the program up, and then finally got her opportunity at South Carolina that gave her more resources and she had more recruiting capabilities and things of that nature. And now she's showcasing to the world how great of a coach she is. You're, so, you're, you're touching on a, on, a, on another subject that I think is really, really important because sometimes what co- coaching isn't just about the X's and O's or no, the diagrams. No, it's not. It, you have to have, you have to have support, mm-hmm. you know, you like, have to have support. You have, to, and, and I don't know if, People understand when you take over a job that's in that's down. Mm-hmm. I don't know what your expectation is for a year. And right. again, I'm not making I'm not making any justification for my experience. Right. But 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 the reality of it is no, it's, it's hard. It's it's challenging. It is when you step into a program that's already down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but but I think that's the part of the coaching that probably people don't talk about enough is that you have to be. A business person, you have to be the marketing. Team. Yeah, you have to go after. It. And I think that when you look at when we're talking about pay, I think the women's pay is going to go up as more eyes are on the sports. Yeah. So when you look at somebody like a Kim Mulkey, people think that she has these flamboyant outfits on just to wear them. But no, that's part of the marketing of what she's trying yeah. to do. She's getting people eyes on it any way that she and can. And she's getting <laughs> she's getting those outfits sent to her yeah. to wear. Yeah. yeah. So people exactly. will start. Yeah. yeah people will start buying those things. Genius, right? Yeah. So when you look at stuff like that. That's what you have to do. That's the part that you have to do to. To get the eyes on you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and that and that way you can justify the higher salary. Yeah, and that, that's why there's a lot of talk right now because I think next year the WNBA players are going to get to renegotiate their contracts, and they're not asking to get paid the same amount as NBA players. They're asking for the same percentage of pay of shares that, like Kelsey Plum, right now is the highest selling jersey in the WNBA. She gets no money. Off jerseys that she sells. See, that's a, that that yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's crazy. yeah. So it's like they're just asking for the same percentage of pay. So like LeBron, I'm sure he gets a certain percentage of however many jerseys of his that sell. They're just asking for that same percentage. They're not. It's not. Real, they're not being unrealistic. Saying, oh, we should make millions of dollars too. They can't. The WNBA is not making millions of dollars right. right now. Now, hopefully, they will, and they will start getting to be able to pay more. But I mean, Caitlin Clark is being as famous as she is. She's been getting paid seventy six thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, like that's crazy. And they're like, oh well, she's lucky because she gets endorsements too. So does LeBron James, and he gets paid like thirty five million dollars a year to play. So I mean, they're just asking for the same percentage. It's not they're asking for the same pay, and I think it's important that people understand that. That's a good point. Yeah, great point. Yeah, and 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 again, I'm I'm glad that. That we've had you on because, like, this is information that I think a lot of people need to hear, mm-hmm. need to know. Mm-hmm. Because and, he, and and I'll be one of the first ones to say like it's educational for me. Yeah, 100%. You know, you know, because I just, yeah. I and again I go back. I love I love the women's game, mm-hmm. and 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 again to Hollis's point, it just looks better. It just looks yeah. like they're mm-hmm. working harder, yeah. like they, for for whatever little bit of money that they're making. And, and trust yeah. me, we're, we're not trying to suck up to the women. No. We're not trying to do, <laughs> no. We're no. Not trying to do yeah. that. I'm no. telling you straight I, up. I'm just glad y'all I watch both games, and that and to watch the men's game is yeah. hard to watch. I'm glad it's people terrible. are finally here. I'm glad yeah. I'm glad people are finally seeing you know how good it is and it's worth um, because it's been like this for. years years we just haven't gotten the chance for it to be showcased like this year was the first year i can remember that every single game from the first round on was nationally televised for people to watch before the women's tournament wasn't televised till maybe the final four 
That's good. Maybe yeah, that's the wild. Elite Eight. Um, you were trying to figure out, you know, they were having to play in like crazy like <laughs> gyms before they even got to the, you know, Elite Eight. The rec centers. Yeah, like rec centers <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, I mean, great. you can listen to all kinds of like Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird. They have a bunch of great podcasts out there. They have a like a 30 for 30 about their experiences playing in Russia and things of that nature. And they talked about the culture shock they had going from UConn which had, you know, the money because mm-hmm. Gino had built this dynasty and they were had all these fans and, you know, they were traveling like great. They were staying in these great hotels and then they get to the WNBA and they're riding on buses. And, they, you know what I mean? And they're having to fly like with everybody else that's going through the airport and things of that nature. So I think it's great that we're, they're finally getting the exposure they deserve because with that, money's going to come too. And, it's, and, and, that, and that's crazy when you, when you, when you say that. But is it crazy? Is it, I mean, what it, I'm it, saying okay, is, it's, what I'm saying is like when you talk about a league, because mm-hmm. we're, we're saying like the NBA, the NBA 25 years in was where the WNBA was at. Right. 25 and it, years and in. it's just it's look, not crazy. Yeah. Look, look at look at the world the too. Beginning. Like look at yeah. the world too. Look at how long it's taken for people to understand that women should be in positions of power and in companies. Yeah. In yeah. companies. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think Amy Goodwin's the first mayor, female she mayor is. of Charleston. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, think about it. Like you don't see women running for office like you do now you didn't see that you know 15 20 years ago um so i think like women in general like it it's our time like we're rising to the occasion we're showing our worth in all aspects not just in sports um but in the world as well that's a good point and and point and they're living up to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, now, it's not, I could get in it's a not whole, a handout. I could get in a whole other debate about yes, how men are trying to set us back 20 years, too, with some of the legislation and stuff going on. But we're not going to yeah. go there. Please. We're not going to go I, there. I need a break. Now. Yeah, I know, I know you don't probably do, need don't a break do, from don't that. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. We ain't going to go there. We're not going to get. We're gonna stay out of politics. And I'll just say this. And Hollis knows I love him to death. But... I don't see any place for politics in sports. <laughs> right. And, 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 and I understand. The thing, and one of the yeah. things, and one of the things that 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 I have seen, mm-hmm. dads in politics who have kids in sports. <laughs> yeah. I th- I creating think... rules and creating rules that benefit their kids. <laughs> Hollis didn't say that. Yeah. Okay. Trust I'm God saying did. that. Yeah. I'm there's... saying that. And it and it and that kind of stuff really, really yeah, po- politics are everywhere, though. I mean, especially in little leagues. Like, that's why you got a bunch of dads oh, out here coaching, and then it's <laughs> their kids going to play the whole game and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, my, my son probably hates that I coached him in little league because I was twice as hard on him than I was on anybody else, just like my dad was growing up. But, I mean, I think politics are going to be everywhere. And I think for sports, the biggest thing with politics is it's not really politics when the NBA or WBA players, like, stand up for something. or They're just – using their platform to showcase right. what they believe in yeah. and I'm all for that I, I don't agree with the shut up and play mentality that some people have um, I think if you have a platform you should use you it whether, whether you're a professional athlete or not like whatever platform that you have I think you should use it um, especially for something that you strongly believe in yeah. what, what, how, how do we kind of not necessarily along the, those lines but when you like I said we, we talked at nauseam just about the game, particularly the WNBA, mm-hmm. college women's college basketball, and just the grit, the grind, just like the the mm-hmm. feel of it. Like when watching the the tournament this year, mm-hmm. it almost felt not like a soap opera, but it felt like a, a like a high stake drama or something. Yeah, like it was intense. Like you mm-hmm. could feel the intensity of yeah. it. Yeah, how do we keep that and prevent the women's game from turning into the men's game? I don't know if the women's game will ever turn into the men's game. It's just. It, I don't even even know if that's even possible because the women's game, I mean, it's it's always going to evolve, right? Just like yeah. the NBA has kind of evolved into what it is now. And I think what you're going to see in the women's game is with the expansion, it's going to show even more that there's a lot of great female athletes out there, no matter what sports you're in. And what I hope is that all this attention on women's basketball in particular is also going to bleed into other women's sports. Because I, 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 I hope we one day get a women's professional, like a big softball league with, with like equal yes. 
Yes. Yes. I, I really think that kid. That like, is very much deserved. It. Yeah, that, that is very much deserved. Yeah. Softball. I'm telling you, women's softball is so fun to watch. So fun. Yeah. Like it, that picture from Stanford this year. Like I was watching her just knock girls mm-hmm. down. I was like, man, women down. I was. We like, had the tournament. We had we had the tournament at at, at the Rock in South Charleston, mm-hmm. and so I had seen collegiate. Softball, because if I'm flipping through the channels and I see it, I, I freeze on it. I watch. Yeah, it. Yeah, it's a sport. Catching, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm watching. I'm it. Yeah. it, and I'm like, and all of a sudden, man, I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, and I'm I'm the dude who's scared of the ball. <laughs> so I'm watching the picture, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I like I would never hit that. Yeah. And then going and watching these young kids play the game, mm-hmm. these young ladies, yeah, playing the game. Yeah. I'm like, man, this is. This is entertaining. Yeah, it's super and, and softball, yeah. softball's blowing up right now, and I, I love you. it. I was fortunate. My best friend, Samantha Snodgrass, she grew up playing so- softball and was one of the best players ever to come out of the state, play D1 at Youngstown. So I knew kind of how good softball was, and then just trying to see, like, how that sport has evolved as well has been phenomenal. Yeah. Like, the Softball World Series is always so entertaining. Super entertaining. So let, yeah. let me ask you this before we go. I know we're closing on time. You being a college coach, mm-hmm. and we talked about the transfer <laughs> we talked about NIL. Yeah. We talked about a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Now, to keep the sanctity of what collegiate sports is supposed to be, mm-hmm. what are one, two rules that you would possibly implement to like just oh. keep it keep it in pocket and not just have this like free agency sort of mentality amongst yeah. athletes and coaches? I mean, that's a loaded question. yeah, man, that's tough. I think it's not even just the transfer portal. I think the NIL has really changed the women's game as well. You like it or not? Um, I love it. I think there definitely needs to be some adjustments with it in both the men's and women's game. Yeah, I think it's kind of like it got out there, and I don't think people realize how out of control it's yes. going to get so yes. quick. Because it's out of control. Yeah, yes. and yeah. it's it really benefits more of the major D1 schools, um, and it makes it hard from a recruiting standpoint as well because how are you going to compete with schools that have the money to pay these kids like kids are not going to turn down money and they're not thinking about what's the best fit for me what where am I going to be the most successful do this does this school have the major that I want to major in you know they're thinking okay who's going to give me the most money that's where I'm going to go yeah 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 the parent is going to make that decision yeah, without yeah, knowing. Yeah, you don't just recruit the kids too, right? You got to have that yes. that rapport with the parents. So, and you know, parents sometimes can almost hurt their kids' chances of yeah. going to a school yeah, by how they act and the questions they ask, especially around financials. Um, I mean, being at the Division two level, like it's not like at West Virginia State we're handing out all kinds of money, like we're getting all this <laughs> NIL money. But um, I think that makes it twice as hard at the Division one level. I think, too, the transfer portal, it has its pros and cons. Like if a kid is truly in a bad situation or think about it, these kids are making this decision at 18 years old yeah. where they're supposed to go and spend the next four years, you know, of their life. And then some make it by themselves. And yeah. Some yes. make it by themselves. And I think too, like, you know, coaches can sometimes sell one thing and then they get there and that's not what it is. Um, that's one thing that I love about uh, Coach Marshall and his recruiting process. He's very straight up about what it's going to be like when you get there. He's very transparent and that's why he's a phenomenal coach. But I think Two, not all coaches are like that. They sell one thing and really their program is something completely different. And I think now instead of kids getting there and being stuck, they have an option to explore other options. I mean, it's just like in the job world, right? You get in a job and, you know, you're there for a couple years and it's not what you thought. You're allowed to leave that job right. and go get another right. job. And right. you don't have to sit out a year and not get paid. Or you don't have to sit right. out a year and not do what you want to do. When you're in college, the higher up you get – Sports are kind of your job on top of being in. Oh, we know it is. Yeah, yeah. on top. No yeah, <laughs> it's your job on top of, you know, yeah. staying on top of your schoolwork and getting your degree. So I think it's great that kids are getting that option. Do I think some kids maybe abuse it? Probably. Some people are always think the grass is greener on the other side. And some people get in the transfer portal because, oh, well, I didn't play like I thought I should have. Well, were you in the gym every day working? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> convincing them of that is yeah, too difficult. Yeah, it's too, di- too difficult. So I, I think the transfer portal and the NIL money really just plays a big factor in college sports yeah. right now. And I think it's it's going to continue to change. And I'm sure the NCAA is probably looking at it and who knows what rules are going to come out on it. Um, but I don't think either one are necessarily a bad thing. Gotcha. 
All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to wrap it up, but I, 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 I sense that our guests will probably be back again. There's some <laughs> NIL stuff that we may want to touch on. Yeah. All right, we appreciate you being, being here for us, and we will be back next week. Let's Talk with Carl Lee is presented by attorney Frank Walker. Real talk, real experience, real results. FrankWalkerLaw.com. Comment on episodes, ask Carl and Hollis questions, or suggest topics at our Facebook page. Search for Let's Talk with Carl Lee, and remember to like the page to become part of the conversation. If you fall, dust it off and get back up on your feet. Anything could be a win, yup, even defeat. They say sugar bad for you, why is victory sweet? Couldn't play with big kids, I had to sit in the street and watch from a distance. But over time, I grew. If I put in the work in no time, I'm due. Everything that I worked and prayed, I'm okay. If you ask me, how did I do it? I'm gonna say, you, you gotta, gotta work. Grind, shine, it's mine. Gotta show everybody it's my time. Getting here, you gotta work. Grind, shine, never mind. Who talking down cause they lying Don't talk, you gotta work 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 You gotta work